Yeah, we could have kept playing, man. I just sat there and enjoyed it. <laughs> if you have your Bible, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 2. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. But then we'll ask you to bless the word. Okay. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, Father God, for the anointing that's upon Brother Brian. We thank you for the anointing that's in this sanctuary. And give him remembrance, Father God, of everything that he study and open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So as I was reading Ephesians, I got to thinking a masterpiece is something unique. And the most expensive masterpiece that there ever was was the painting Mona Lisa. And it's valued at over $700 million just for one little painting. And when Leonardo da Vinci had started painting it, he thought out every stroke that he made on that painting before he ever made the next stroke. And our life's like that with God. God will take our life, and he has our whole life planned out for us before we ever took a breath. Amen. He has made every stroke in our life that is ever going to matter to make a masterpiece out of us if we're willing to let him. Amen. And I got to study, what is a masterpiece? And I mean, we look at the stained glass, and you see all those little broken pieces that the person who made that glass that they took their time and they whittled away at each one of those little broken pieces and started forming it together to make something beautiful. Amen. And a masterpiece, if you look up the definition, it says a work or performance of a master or a piece of work surpassing excellence. That is our life. If you think about what Christ has done in our life and how he's moved, we're excellent. Amen. Once you come to salvation in Christ Lord. and he starts working in us and we allow God to move and work in us, we become excellent as the pro progress goes on in his eyes. So as I was studying, I was thinking about God used a lot of broken people in the Bible and turned them into masterpieces Amen. and made an excellent work in them. So the first one that comes to mind, if you take Moses, you, you look at Moses and, and his life and the things that he done, he was a murderer. He had a speech problem. He couldn't talk. He was rejected not only by Egypt, but he was rejected by the Israelites. He had all these things come against him. He could have sought in every bit of that or he could have let God use him Amen. and overcome it and bring forth the exodus out of Israel, part in the Red Sea, and he let God use him because he listened to Amen. God and didn't get stuck in one situation where he let it just drown him out and he could have gave up. Amen. Amen. If you look on down in Genesis, you know, you see Joseph. 
You know, Joseph was Jacob's son, and he had a dream. And his brothers hated him for the two dreams that he had. Right. I mean, they could not stand the thought of him being ruler over them. Right. And even Jacob rebuked Joseph for the dream because he said the moon and the stars talking about Amen. his mom and dad would, <coughs> would bow down to him because he was going to be great. So his brothers, first of all, they were going to kill him. But I think it was Judah had convinced them not to kill him, just to throw him in a pit. But while they were sitting there plotting his demise, they, a caravan came along and they ended up selling him into slavery and he ended up in Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar's wife lied on him and then he ended up in jail. At this point, Joseph had every right to give up. He sure did. He had every right to let the press and sink in down in him he had every right to be bitter and just full of hate and unforgiveness. He could have let that ruin him. But Joseph seeked God. Amen. And instead of letting all that turmoil and hardship eat away at him, he ended up being able to use it. That's right. So when he ended up being elected into Pharaoh's court, second in command, he ended up Tell him what the dream meant that Pharaoh had. And he was able to save not only his family, he saved millions of people through listening to God and what the Amen. dream meant. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So in Genesis 50, he actually told his brothers, he forgave his brothers. And he said, you know, what you meant for evil against me, he said, God used it for good right. in order to bring about all this this day. Amen. So we look at Joseph's life. So he ended up, instead of letting things eat away day, he let God use him Amen. in order to be surpassed. So I look at my life, or all of us can look at our lives. You know, we've all been hurt. Some of us have been hurt so bad that we don't think we'd ever get over it. Amen. We, we have been sick. We've been afflicted. Amen. We've been things that's happened to us in our lives that we think there's no way in the world God can ever make a masterpiece out of our lives. There, we have messed up so bad and Satan kicks us and knocks us around that we don't think that we can ever let God put it all back together. Don't think that we can let his will be used through us because our conscience and Satan, he'll always try to kick us around and make us feel like we're unworthy. In Romans 12, verse 2, it says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. It says, But let God transform you Amen. into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn and know God's will for you, like which is good and pleasing and perfect. Like you know, we can take our own situations, and if we think back of all the situations we've been through in our life and how God has brought that situation past us, he's healed us, he's made us harder and stronger than we ever thought we would be, and we could use that for somebody else. Amen. You know, you take a bone, when you break a bone, when that bone heal, heals back, that bone ends up being stronger than it ever was before as that calcium deposit forms around it. I broke my collarbone years ago, and I think other than my hand, it's the only bones I've ever broken in my body. And that collarbone, the break never did heal for the longest time. But the calcium deposit was so thick around it, the doctor said it would be almost impossible to break again the same way that I broke it. Just because it had got so hard and strong and it fused it together on the outside, right. the inside was stronger than it ever would have been because of what had happened. I like that. Thank you, Lord. So God lets us go through things a lot of times. You know, and we'll look at things that 
It seems like it's going to destroy us at the moment. It looks like things that we don't think we're going to recover from. It looks like, you know, the hurt in this situation, God uses that to make us stronger. Right. He uses it for us not only to be stronger witness for him, but it also builds our faith up toward him. We're, we're stronger with our faith than what we ever thought of before. And at the end, we look at how beautiful it is. The things that we thought was so ugly and depressing, and, you know, we could be in a state of depression or, or hatred or bitterness, and when we pull ourselves out of it and allow God to use us instead of being soft in it, and he just strengthens us by it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a masterpiece. And a lot of times we just have to grasp it and keep going instead of giving up. So the third person in the Bible that God really shone through and through all the, the brokenness and the damage and stuff that happened is David. You know, David started out, you know, he slayed a giant. He ended up Becoming a king of Israel, and he was a man after God's own heart. But David's problem, he ended up seeing Bathsheba, and he ended up in adultery. He ended up getting Uriah killed, her husband, and he lost his son, and he was broken from it. So all these things impacted David's life. But out of that brokenness and all the turmoil that happened, David had another son. He had Solomon. He had many sons, but there's one in particular. And we look at the greatness of Solomon and all the things that Solomon did, but there's one thing he did. He passed his lineage on, and down the road, Christ was born out of it. But the thing that David done and what his mistakes and failures and what encapsulated him was the adultery part that led to the other things that caused him to fall. But the glimmer of hope and what the, I believe the stained glass part of it is that when you look through the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew and it says that David but God Solomon, he still named you right. Because God thought that that stain was so bad, but he still saw you right in the picture because that was you right's wife, still to God. And out of that, it just made a masterpiece in my eyes because God thought so much of If you read about you right, you see how faithful and loyal and how great he was as a soldier. But out of all that brokenness, Uriah is still named over in Matthew. Yeah. So we come down to the probably the best part of brokenness being a masterpiece. In Isaiah 63, oh, 61, verse 3, it says, He will give a crown of beauty for ashes. And I talked about this once before. When Jesus stood up in the temple and announced his ministry and what he was getting ready to do, he read Isaiah 61. Yeah. But when he says, I will give a crown of beauty for ashes. And he says, I'll a joyous blessing instead of mourning. If we look at Christ's life and you look at the brokenness that he went through for us, Amen. that is the ultimate masterpiece being made. Amen. You know, we look at Christ as he's as he does his ministry, he's rejected by his own people. And he knew all this beforehand, but still the humanity part of it, he it hurt for him. 
We see that he hurts when he he goes to Lazarus and Lazarus is dead. He says he's, he wept. Jesus wept. So we see the humanity of Jesus and know that his feelings is hurt and moved by things going on around him. But then we look at Jesus, you know, he, he's brought before Pontius Pilate. He ends up being flogged and scourged. And out of that masterpiece, we have ultimate healing. Amen. Because it says, by his stripes we're healed. He was shamed because he's stripped naked on the cross. I mean, we look at, you know, when do the play or we watch shows on TV, they show Christ still in his tunic. But the thing is, when the Romans crucified prisoners, they were stripped naked because of the shame. Yeah. It was a shame, it was the most shameful way to die. I mean, they actually broke people, not only they broke their spirit when they nailed them to the cross, but they totally stripped them and it was a shameful thing to die that way. Amen. It was a cursed way. It said it was cursed to die like that. But we look at Jesus. He's, he's going through that. But the most hurtful thing was being rejected by the Father when he took up on the sin of the world. Amen. So as Jesus goes through all that, and it looks like all humanity's lost, that you know the disciples who followed him, the ones that ran and hid. It looks like all that's lost until he rises on the third day. And to me, that is the ultimate masterpiece of what God done. So we look how Jesus was rose up. That gives us hope that no matter what we go through, we can raise up from it. Because like when I read Ephesians 2.10, the second part of that says, so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Yeah. What is the good things? I mean, what, what is the good things? You think of each one of us personal life that what we've been through, God uses that for a ministry for somebody else. Amen. That's right. How could I tell my friends, I had a friend that really confided in me last week, he had turned his heart to Christ and trying to restore his marriage or starting to work on restoring his marriage. How could I tell him how to overcome marital problems if I hadn't been through marital problems myself and, right. and be able to give a word? Amen. God uses every one of those broken parts of our life that we thought was Broken and nothing could ever be done to them other than swept up, put in a trash can. He uses them to make a masterpiece. Amen. He uses them that so when people are hurting around us and they're going through something, he will put that person. I, I promise you, if you will pray, Lord, put somebody in front of me that my life will have an impact on them, that what I've been through, that you'll put that same person in front of me that I can do your will. Amen. I guarantee you he will put somebody right in front of you and you'll have your chance to see what God has made Amen. you into. I agree. I agree. And I'm getting ready to close and the last thing that I want you to understand that everything we go through God already knew about Psalms 139 which is my favorite. Amen. Probably Psalm, at least, probably chapter in the whole Bible. Because it says we're wonderfully and fearfully made. Amen. Amen. We're wonderfully made. Amen. Just because you've been through all these problems and you've let all this stuff heap up on us. That's right. He says you're still mournfully made. That means that God can use those problems instead of being swept up through the trash. Amen. He can make something awesome out of all the stuff we've been through and turn it into a victory that gives him glory. Amen. Which is the ultimate purpose for everything that we go through. In Romans 8, 28, it says, 
All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. Amen. And to them who's called according to his purpose. It, it don't say all good things work together. It says all things. That means the bad things, the terrible things, and the great things, they all work together for them that love the Lord. Amen. That means that no matter what comes against me in my life, if I don't get down and out on it and let it work on my mind and crush my heart, and if I'll depend on God and pull myself up, then I know that I can get through it. I agree. And I know that God can pull me through it. So the thing is, we've got to let God do the work in us. We've got to let him make a masterpiece out of us. That when light comes through a stained glass, it's for everybody to see. Amen. And it's beautiful. Stained glass is beautiful. When it is put together and light hits and it shines through, it is a beautiful thing. And our life is the same way. God wants to take all those pieces that we thought we should hide and not ever be able to be shown to anybody that everybody thinks we're perfect Christians. He wants the world to see that he has transformed that into something beautiful. And that he's wanting to use it for everybody to see. Amen. That we can see his work in us. Amen. Because I'll be honest with you. Nobody really wants to go to a church leader that has been perfect their whole life. They don't want to listen to a preacher that's never, you know, failed. I mean, I know there's some out there. But how can that guy relate to me or you or somebody else who has fallen so far from humanity that when God picks us up, we're wanting to hear that word that cuts our heart Amen. and feeds us. Amen. So in closing, That's good. let God take all those parts and lay them out. That's good. And then when you know he's got all those parts, just ask him, let somebody see me that they can see you. And if we do that, because when they have the Mona Lisa and it's hanging up on a wall at a museum, there's thousands and thousands of people rushing in to see it. And we're more of a masterpiece than that Mona Lisa will yes. ever be. And I guarantee you, if we allow God to let people see us for what he's done in our life and not hide it, that's why it says, don't put your light, you light under a bushel. That's right. He wants everybody to see it. That's right. If we're willing to do that, we'll have people that we can tell them about the Amen. goodness of God and how much God loves them and the work that he's done in my life. If you think... He can clean me up and pick me up and straighten me up. Don't you think he can do that to you? Oh, yeah. So that's what he's wanting to do. Ask him to use you this week. I promise you, if you ask him, put one person in front of me, he will put one person in front of you, and you'll have your chance. So that's all I've got tonight. Amen. never looked at it like that. We are all masterpieces and we all sometimes feel like it we're broken in such a way that we can never be used. But God can take that brokenness and turn it around and curve it back right again and make it fit just the way that he wants it to fit. There's something good in everybody. We all need to look at that. And Brian so greatly put it out. I mean, you look at that stained glass, it's so many parts, you don't know which way it's coming. Well, we're the same way. There's goodness in Jim, there's goodness in Brian, there's goodness in all of you out here. Different people see his goodness. 
Maybe not the same way that someone else did. But I think you've done an awesome job, brother. Amen. Awesome. Anybody else? Thank you.